Hello, friends. Welcome into another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And this is episode 188. 188. What are we doing today? This is Shedding the Ego. Oh. I'm excited. I yeah. like this topic. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm excited to talk about it. Me too. Anything we want to talk about from last week first? Yes. So last week we did readings by me. Yep. And I have some feedback from those. Cool. Uh, I have a bunch of feedback, but I'm just going to read three of them because we got a lot to talk about today. Okay. So the first one is from Crystal. And Crystal, I did the reading for her for her son that was looking into go, going into the military. Yeah. And it just wasn't working. Yeah. Okay. She says, thank you. Jacob and I both listened to this episode, and it was very emotional for us both. Yes, my grandpa Jacob's great-grandpa was a Marine officer who died in the Vietnam War. My father was just a small child when he passed, and he didn't get to raise his three children who he adored. Both Jacob and I are very connected to him spiritually, and Jacob's always wanted to follow in Jacob's Jacob has always wanted to follow in the footsteps by joining the military. The amount of wild roadblocks that made no sense makes so much sense now. Thank you, Jacob, and I will update you when he starts college. He Knew right away when you said strong male that grandpa doesn't want him to go down the same path he did. Yeah. I've always thought that the military would destroy my son emotionally, but it's hard to tell a kid who is so determined and masculine that. Thank you so much, Samantha and Danny. Oh, that's cool. Yes. Thank you so much, Crystal. Those yeah. are just little ways that like these abilities I'm <clears throat> able to help people because now if there was something that was going to happen and he was going to push, push, push to go into the military, yeah. that won't happen. So that makes me happy. Very cool. Yay. And then the next one is from Jenna. I read her dogs, one that had recently <clears throat> passed and one that was the best friend of the one that had passed. She said, thank you. Zach and I both listened and were very emotional. Yes, Benny slept more when we lost Lily. I've wondered if he, if he felt like my right hand and it seems so important. I also wanted to confirm two things. Lily did jump around and have lots of energy in life. She never walked anywhere and was incredibly athletic. And two, we adopted a rescue Boston Terrier like Lily in June named Ziggy. He looks remarkably similar and over time has developed more and more of her behaviors. I've included a photo of them. Thank you again. Best of luck with the house and healing sent to Marina. Nice. Yay. So thank you so much for that, thank Jenna. You. And then the last one is from Alicia. Alicia had the neighbor whose dog passed away while she was in the hospital yeah. and then adopted Zelda. She said, hi, I just wanted to tell you that I listened to the podcast yesterday. Thank you so much for doing the reading on Zelda. I was running around yesterday, a foster dog I have found a new home in L.A., uh, and I didn't get back to listen, so it wasn't until yesterday. I was telling Lou about it when I got home that it's so interesting because I didn't know you had already talked to Zelda, but before I left in the morning, I called Lou to see if she was okay, and she was so impressed because she said Zelda started going out to the bathroom and letting her know when she needs to go out. And I thought, oh, that's great. She's learning quickly, but obviously it had something to do with you talking to her. Again, thank you so much. Mm. So a lot of times, cool. yeah. A lot of times, even in my reading group, so you guys know, because I have a free reading group on Facebook, if you don't know that, uh, I will talk to the animals when the reading comes in, even if I don't get a chance to actually do the reading. If there's something that I can quickly tell them, if like they just came to a new home right. or whatever, right. I will tell them that without even doing the reading. Right. So sometimes if you see a change, you know, like this situation, yeah. that's why. It's funny how that worked out, too, because she was rather worried about having to share with the owner yes. of the pet and that actually went a lot smoother yes. than she was anticipating it so. usually does for <clears throat> all of us it's yeah. those times that we really get ourselves worked up about something yeah. and then doesn't go the way at all that we think it's going <laughs> to yeah. yeah so thank you th the three of you for those yes. reviews and to Thanks. everybody else that sent the feedback i appreciate it very cool yay 
And then every week we answer two questions. And so I got this email from a new listener, Rachel, and she asked two questions in her email that I thought were good to use for the show. So I'm going to read those. All right. She says, hi, Samantha and Danny. I'm a new listener to your show. I found your radio show on Voice America, and that brought me here. I love awesome. everything I've heard so far. My first episode of, episode of your radio show was the one with your sister. Your story sounds almost unbelievable, but I know it's true. <laughs> I'm hoping in your podcast episodes that you talk about it, although I've just started on episode one, so I'm not sure how long it will take me to get to those. <laughs> yeah, quite a while. Yeah. Sorry about that. Forgive, forgive us for yeah. the quality of those like first four. <laughs> They're awful. We always cringe when somebody yeah. says I started with one. We're like, ooh. But yes, you will hear about, about all of it. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so let's see. I'm curious about something that you didn't talk about with your sister. I hope this isn't too personal to ask, but I'm very curious how things are with your dad. I have a similar story I would love to share with you sometime if you're interested. So there's question number one that I thought I haven't addressed this. And there have been a few other listeners that have asked and I haven't felt like I really wanted to. But right. The thing is, is that we have to show you guys that we are real people that have real things that happen to us. And sometimes those things don't always go yeah. as expected or great. Um, the Mark, my father, isn't really who I guess I had hoped he would be. And that's OK. We're all different. But alcoholism runs very deep in the family. Mm -hmm. And I'm just not into it. I, I have to separate myself from yeah. any kind of drama any kind of uh, thing that reminds me of my childhood because I was around a lot of alcoholics when I was a child as well. And so I've had to separate myself, unfortunately. It's not what I had hoped, and I'm sure it's not what he had hoped, but we're two completely different people, and I've never had a father to begin with, so right. bringing somebody in at 44 years old was very difficult for me to begin with. I didn't know how to have a father, and I, I still really don't. So... I got my sister out of the deal and that's wonderful. That's, that was more than worth everything yeah. that I've gone through to get there. Yeah. And you know, it, it, it's still fresh and it could change. Something could change, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So you just take it as it comes. Yeah, exactly. Really? But and you're right. Okay. You got Amanda and man is a wonderful person. So, yep. you know, exactly. that's a, that in itself is, is a win. Yes, it is. And that's what was supposed to happen. <clears throat> yeah. You know, there's reasons why everything happens in life, all of these struggles. And I truly believe that I needed to know that this man is my father and I needed to meet Amanda. And now he has closure on that. He he knows that who I am and all that. Mm -hmm. And that that's if that's all it is, then that's OK. I'm OK with that. So that was question number one. So thank you for that. And then Thanks. the second one, I love this question because I have thought about this before. Uh, do you think it's possible we are set up as children to have these experiences so we can undo the damage done to us by others as adults? I think absolutely. I think that's a big part of what's going on here. Yes. Is the karma aspect and how if you believe what I believe and you're living multiple lives, how do we undo the karma that's already been done? Right. Well, it's by coming back here again, faced with similar situations to learn it, hopefully for the last time. Yes. And do it differently. Then you will have passed that test right. and you will have fixed that karma. Yes. Absolutely. I agree. And and everything does happen for a reason and happens the way that it's supposed to. And I think for some of us like myself that I'm a light worker and so I'm here to help people. And one of the ways that I help them is through my experiences and the empathy that I can give, especially with those experiences. If I would have had a perfect childhood, which I don't think anybody has had i couldn't do the kind of work that i do the way that i do it plus it it does make the story more interesting yeah. you know and it but that's just looking at my <clears> life <throat> for other people that might be like well i was you know physically abused or or whatever that their story was it's really hard to see the reason why 
but there always is. And yes, it could be past life. It could be something that you need to learn in this life, an arrangement that you have mm -hmm. with the person. Yeah. There's so many different reasons, but there always, always, always is one. And I definitely believe that we're supposed to go through all of these things to become the people that we are and right. unlearn those those bad habits. But this per um, Rachel, Rachel, the fact that she put it in context as, you know, starting as a child and that's, that's it right there. It's, um, <clears throat> we're given a choice somewhere inside. There's a choice that says I can either do the same that was done to me or try to do something different. Yeah. Change maybe at least the part I, some of the parts I didn't like Yeah. about my childhood, you know, that <clears throat> because we're so impressionable. We're like sponges. Yep. And sometimes things happen <clears throat> that don't make sense. Maybe like with my father, for example. Yeah. Like, why wasn't he around when I was a kid? A lot of people would be mad at that parent for disowning them or, or I guess it wouldn't be disowning, but abandoning, right. I guess is a good word. Yeah. For me, I'm so thankful. <clears throat> I'm so thankful that that's the way it went and it was supposed to go that way. But others might not see it that way. They might be like, that's horrible. And, you know, I, I think you have to look at it for what it is. Right. And how would my life have been if he would have been around? Right. So that we have to look at all of those things with our childhood and see that everything right. happens the way it's supposed to. And yeah. you're each individually on your own path, your own journey. Yes. I mean, you're related, your family, whatever. Either you're in each other's lives or you're not. But regardless, you're each living your own journey yes exactly exactly so thank you for those questions rachel Great and question. i would love to hear your story i i love i think that it's it's amazing when people have these kinds of connections whichever yeah. way they go whether it's you know the big happy ending or not so yeah. much it's still very interesting but i'm glad you found us yes absolutely too. me too very cool me too thank you thank you rachel thank you okay and then let's do a reading so this reading is for a friend of mine. Her name is Britt. And Britt, I'm not sure if she's ever listened to the podcast before. I put a thing up or on my Facebook page about animals. Animals make everything better. Mm -hmm. And she commented on it and said, I would love to get a reading on my cat. And so I'd love to do a reading for her. All right. Okay. So let's see. This is Beans. He is a kitty. She says he is about a year old and he only likes me and my mom and dad. If anyone else comes to our house, he runs and hides for hours. I've had him since he was a kitten and I'm afraid I'm responsible for him having like PTSD or something because I had him with me at my ex's house and my ex became very angry and aggressive and we were fighting and I had to grab my cat from under his bed and get the heck out of the house. I think that may be why he is so scared of anyone but us. I've never had a cat like this before who hid under the bed covers when he sees anyone. I guess I just want to know if that's what caused it, if there's anything I can do to help him be less scared. I am so excited for this reading. You have no idea. This cat is literally everything to me. I'm obsessed with him. He's probably going to tell you, hey, tell this chick to stop kissing me so much and quit <laughs> calling me furry britches. <laughs> So let's talk to Beans. He's really uh, cute. cute. Love yeah. him. He's definitely an attention hog. He loves to be the center of attention. Some cats don't. And I'm not talking about with others. I'm talking about with you and with with your parents. He loves to be the center of attention. He loves it when you guys laugh about silly things that he does or, oh, he's so cute. Those kinds of things. He will do more and more things to try and get you to do that. <laughs> so you might even see when you say things like that, that he's like, oh, you know, like you can see it in his face a little bit, I think. <laughs> Let's see what he has to say about what happened and what's going on. Okay, so one of the issues is that he's not really, wasn't really exposed to a lot of people as a kitten. So it's kind of like socialization. Yeah. Uh, if you socialize them when they're young, then a lot of times they're good around everybody. But cats in general, 
this is really what they do too. They're kind of loners. Yeah. yeah, like I was a pet sitter before this, and in 20 years, I would say that probably half of the cats that I watched, I didn't see most of the time. Yeah. Some I never, ever, ever saw, and it doesn't mean that they have psychological damage. It just means that maybe they're that's who they are as cats, or that they weren't socialized correctly. I think that's, you know, dogs are different. They want to be around everybody, but cats are very picky and, and stuff. So, but with, with beans, I want to make sure he's not scared, you know, that when people come over, he's not feeling like somebody's going to hurt me. So let's, let's make sure that that's not what's going on here. Yeah. He's really not a social cat. I don't think that this is ever going to really change and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. There really are some cats that are just all over people and some that aren't. I don't feel like he's necessarily anxious and nervous the whole time somebody's there. I feel like when the person first gets there, he wants to find his spot and then he settles in. Um, I do hear him listening for fluctuations in tone of voice. So I think that, that there is a part of him that, I don't think it was just one incident. I think that, that he's just very sensitive to um, arguing, uh, voice level changes, anything that's really loud like that. So I feel like when you have people over that are more quiet and chill and that, then he relaxes more. Uh, if, if I came over to your house, I might be able to get him to come out. It just depends on the right. person's energy and their right. their, you know, that's what I was feeling animals. like it might take somebody she knows that would be willing to yeah. try to coax him to show him that yeah. it's okay to be social with other people. Yeah, but just like some people are introverts, some cats are introverts. Yeah, he may not. Yeah, so I feel yeah. like that's that's number one. He's an introvert, and that's okay. Right. Number two is that people kind of make him nervous, but he's all right once they settle in. Uh, and, and again, I don't think that that's going to change, and that's okay. But just know that he's not traumatized. He doesn't have PTSD. He would have been like this most likely anyways. But I do want to address something real quick. And this isn't necessarily to you, Britt. This is to everybody when it comes to animals. They pick up our energy. So if you have a household that's very loud or um, there's a lot of arguing going on, animals feel that. And they're a part of that argument. And like for me, I try not to like if we're going to have an argument, I don't want to do it around the dogs. Right. I really don't because then they get anxious. Even if I'm anxious, if I'm having an off day, especially Zuma, he feels it. He, mm -hmm. he knows they're really, really responsive to us. So they do a lot of times feed on that. And when we have a, a household that has a lot of arguing that can make their lives more difficult. I just like to point that out because I don't think people think about that right. a lot when they're, you know, especially even with kids, yeah. even with kids that are really loud and, you know, teenagers that are screaming, the animals don't like it. Yeah. So a lot of times they will act that way strictly because of that. I think so. if anything, their senses are even more heightened, you know, because oh, they yeah. can't really speak. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so, so yeah. So I hope that that helps answer your questions about Beans Brit. He's not. He doesn't have PTSD. He's not anything like that. He's he just is an introvert cat. So and he loves you very much. And yeah, it is kind of annoying when you smush your face up against him. He tells me, but at the same time, he wouldn't want you to not. Right. Yeah. So if he to me that seems like one of those cats where it's like you do it, you put your face in them, and then they're like acting all annoyed. And then once you stop, they're like, but wait, come back. Yeah. That's that's kind of what I see him doing. So. So hope that that helps, Britt, and cool. thank you for letting Thanks, me read Britt. for you. Yeah. All right. So before we get into the episode, let's give our info. Do it. Yay. So you can find me at samanthajonespsychicmedium.com. My radio show is on voiceamerica.com on the Empowerment Channel, Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's called Beyond the Bridge with Samantha Jones. And looky, looky here. We what I have, have the number. If you would like to be... Uh, you know, call into the show, get a reading, talk to me. Do it. Actually, this coming week would be a good week because I'm going to be doing an episode about uh, losing a loved one, um, the, the kind of trauma that comes with that and, mm -hmm. and everything in between. So the show number is 888-346-9141. Awesome. Yay. So, call up. Yeah, call up and talk to me. Anytime, this week, next week, whenever. Yeah, absolutely. And then you, sir. 
Yes, for my art, djonesartcollection.com for the web, at djonesartcollection for Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And I did get a very nice article from Voyage LA, which I'd like to say thank you Yay. very much. Appreciate that. It was very nice. That's, yes, it was a great and article. And that came out, was it Monday? I don't remember. The 12th or the 13th? Day. I don't know. It was the same. Anyways, <laughs> it's this week's publication of Voyage LA. Yay. And yeah, I, see, I think it's in the local stories section, so... Yeah, remind this. me and I'll share it on the podcast page. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, awesome. All right. That's all I got. Great. You know what? Let's just give an update real quick oh, yeah. that we're doing okay because we talked last week about yes. the flood and everything and we're doing okay. We're still at home. Yep. Um, we're getting things taken care of. We have heat now. So we yep. had a few messages, so I thought we better just say that real quick. Yes. Construction's <laughs> not over. Hasn't no. even really started. Well, a little bit did, but... Enough to get us heat. the heat and hot water on this side of the house is wonderful. Yeah, it it is. <laughs> it's sometimes when those things happen, it's like I feel so grateful. I know. Afterwards, it reminds you of to be grateful for the little things. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So yeah, I was thinking about when I mentioned that the other day. I was like, oh, man, I realize there's people that don't actually have this ever. Yes. And probably in worse yeah. temperatures than I'm in. Yes. So. I'm complaining about 40 <laughs> degrees weather of being 60 in the house, you know, yeah. where uh, one of my cousins, she put on Facebook that it's it's negative one. Okay. I was like, I don't even know what that feels like. Sorry for complaining. No, thanks. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, then. Episode 188, Shedding the Ego. Shedding the Ego. So we have done an ego episode before. It's episode 71. That episode talks more about what the ego is and the different kinds and, and that. This episode is going to be more about what happens when we're going through a spiritual awakening and we start shedding the ego. We start wanting to find that path to enlightenment. Right. That's what this is about. Ego is a necessary yet confusing part of our personalities. Mm -hmm. Depending on how you personally define ego, it may be something you find desirable or it may be something that you like to avoid. The definition of ego also depends on who you ask. The dictionary, dictionary defines it as a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. The word ego is a Latin word referring to self of identity, identity of self. There are a lot of terms that we use that include the word ego, big ego, egomaniac, egocentric, super ego. They pretty much all mean the same. Yeah. I asked our listeners, true or false, your ego is the source of your suffering. And they 48% said true and 48% said, I don't know. Mm. And 2% said false. So I'm hoping that by the end of this episode, the 48% that that didn't know before that maybe they will, some of them will yeah. know now how they feel about that. Mm -hmm. When on a spiritual journey, it's important for enlightenment for us to go through this stage where we let go of the ego. It's actually called ego death. Mm -hmm. And ego death is the realization that you are not really the things that you identify with. This is not a simple concept. You don't just wake up one morning and say, I'm going to shed my ego today. And just like that, it's gone. No. The process takes time and work. and on But honestly, it changes your life. Right. I can say from personal experience that it's been completely worth going through this transformation. Right. I have learned more in the last five years going through the spiritual awakening yeah. about myself and everything that comes with the ego than I ever did in the, the 40 years prior. Yeah, I feel like the, the spirituality was more of an awakening. The ego is more of a realization mm -hmm. of yeah. understanding what what it is, why it's really there, yep. and how I abuse it yes. as a human being, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The, and the death of the ego can be scary. Sometimes you may detach or disassociate. It may also, you may also resist the change. So like a lot of people, and I, and I was like this at first too, you don't want to accept something negative about yourself. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'll throw this one out there because it's a simple one, is that I'm not the cleanest person in the world. Not personal hygiene, that I'm good with. <laughs> but... I grew up in a home with a mother that had clutter everywhere and it wasn't like, I'm not a dirty person. I'm just not the tidiest. Right. You know, I can admit that. Right. 
I didn't used to be able to admit that, but now I can admit that. It is hard to yeah. say to yourself, I'm not perfect. I'm not yeah. all of these things that I think I am. Oh, yeah. It's really, really hard to do that, but it's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, so let's see. The ego really is only an illusion, but it's a very influential one. Mm -hmm. Letting the ego letting the ego illusion become your identity can mm -hmm. prevent you from knowing your true self. Ego is the false idea of believing that you are what you have or what you do and and is the backwards way of I'm sorry, I can't even read my own writing. <laughs> The backwards way of assessing my living of the living of my life. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is actually a quote by Wayne Dreyer, who is a self help author. Right. So shedding the ego or either de ego death implies that you no longer identify with those pieces of you, right? But how do you do that? How do you let go of those pieces of yourself? Because it is really hard when you identify, mm -hmm. you know, with those. Right. And like I said before, I think one of the ways is to actually, you have to be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. But another way, and this way really kind of sucks, is asking the people around you, what is it that you think, I don't want to say I need to change about myself, right, right. but when you look at me, what is it that maybe you think I would be happier with? Right. If I let go of this piece of myself, would I be a happier <clears throat> person? You know? That's a good yeah, I think that's a good idea. Because I think that's really what it comes down to. I think that it comes down to we're supposed to be happy. Right. And that the ego makes us kind of hold on to mm. a lot of, like, negativity. Right. You know? And, you know, it's it's important to have a little bit of ego. Like, in this process, it's not completely ego death. Well, we wouldn't have it if it was... <laughs> Every human would not have it if it wasn't meant to be here for a reason. Yes. I think that reason is what sort of gets misconstrued in the process of life. Um, and again, you're going from being a child and a, like a little sponge, like I said earlier, where you could be picking up just from a very young age, multiple bad habits that you see going on around you. Mm -hmm. That's the first step in, you know, things not being great for you but it's this and we teach this throughout the ages of standing out being an individual mm -hmm. being unique and there is nothing wrong with that because we are individually unique it's when i started to recognize that i am more a part of a whole sum than I am yes. an individual intricate part. Right. Important part. Yes. You know, I am important, but every's a, everyone's important because we're making this whole thing happen. Yes. Yes. That was actually the next thing I was going to say. It was like you read my mind. Huh. Is that ego death is a spiritual transformation. You see how small you are in the grand scheme of things. You feel small but still significant enough to play a role on this planet. Mm -hmm. But yes, this has this whole process has made me see just how small I am. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. The smaller you start to see yourself, the more I feel like, the more I realize how much I'm a part of that greater whole. Yep. The bigger I see myself, it, meaning in an egotistical way, the less I see my connection to that greater whole. I then start feeling alienated from it. Right. Yeah. So let's see. I want to read this first before we go any farther into how to kind of go through this ego death process. I asked our listeners, do you relate to any of the following? Because these are some signs of that maybe the ego is something that needs to be worked on. The first one was you always have to be right. Second is you have to win an argument or you have to win whether it's an argument or a game. That I think that's a big one. I think there's a lot of people that they want to win, win, win all the time, but that's not what it's about. It's about what you learn from it or having fun in the process. Like, I don't need to win at a game. I'm the type of person that might even let somebody else win on purpose. Right. Just because that's, you know, if it makes them happy. Yeah. But yeah, for sure. 
Uh, let's see. You blame others for your mistakes or when things don't go your way. I think that's a really common one for people, too, because it comes down to I don't want to admit when I'm wrong. Yeah, you know? that's hard. That's hard. And that's facing your ego. Yeah, it is. Which that's why it's hard. It's meant to be hard because there's some sort of something you're supposed to really look at. Yes, absolutely. These in that are... moment or that lesson. Yes, these are all things right. that we're supposed to look at for sure. Uh, let's see. You talk mostly about yourself and don't engage others about their life. I've really become very self-conscious about this. And I've noticed that since I have, since I've really like, unless people ask about me, I don't throw out my information about what's going on in my life. Right. I have noticed that most people only want to talk about themselves. Mm -hmm. That's a harsh reality because it makes you think, why? Like, they know their stories. Like, I love my brother, Justin. He's the best in the whole world. <laughs> but his whole life revolves around telling everybody yeah. the same exact story about what's going on in his life and then going, everything good with you? Okay, love you, bye. <laughs> and uh, He's not listening. He's the living so. Peter Griffin. <laughs> what? He's the living Peter Griffith. He is, yes. Love him to death. But yes, it's like, I okay, I've him. talked about myself for 20 minutes. Bye. Have a good day. Gotta go run. Yeah. Uh, it, and now I've kind of, like, when people do, when they ask me, you know, something about myself, I try to reciprocate that as well. That's always something that I realized after the fact that maybe they asked me a question about yeah. myself. And then later on, I go, oh, I didn't ask them. And so I really try and pay conscious mm -hmm focus to that um, yeah. so I can make sure that the other person feels just as good about the conversation. I've all, yeah, I learned that at a young age to, you know, that's how you're going to draw somebody in in a conversation or to a friendship or a relationship is being inquisitive about that person. Yes. And it should hopefully go both ways, yeah. you know, and then you develop a relationship. Right. Exactly. It's it's hard to have a relationship when the, it's just one sided. Mm -hmm. you know? Let's see. The next one is you feel superior to others around you. I think that's a huge problem with society. And that kind of comes down to entitlement as well. Yeah. And, you know, I, I will say that I used to have this sense of entitlement and didn't even realize that that's what it was. Yeah. I realize it now. Um, people that speed on the freeway and weave in and out of cars, they think that they're entitled. They think that the laws don't apply to them. I've done plenty of things like that. But mm. I realize now that if everybody thinks that way, yeah. if everybody thinks that they are entitled to acting a, a different way than everybody else, then everybody's acting that way. Yeah. So we all have to say, I'm not, I, I'm not entitled. I'm not, I shouldn't act this, this way. I should act right. the way that, you know, well, so-and-so did. Right. Yeah. Exactly. No. <clears throat> uh, the next one, you feel jealous when other people do well. And it was funny because my sister screenshotted this and she sent it to me and she's like, which ones do you think I'm going to pick? And that was the one that I picked for her. And she's like, oh, man. But it, it's it's true. No offense, Amanda. I, and I know a lot of people that do this and I'm not going to lie and say I've never done this myself, right. but I have. For whatever reason, I think that we feel that there's only a certain amount of success. Mm -hmm. And if somebody else is given a large amount of success, mm -hmm. it means that we're not entitled to any of no, it. That's wrong. But you're right. A lot yes. of people think that. And that's wrong. Yes. For me, through this process, I've realized that if I'm successful and I can take people along on that ride with me and help them, yeah. that I want to do that. I want to yeah. be able to have, you know, help people with that kind of thing. I don't want to be jealous. Right. I don't of people that are doing better than me or mediums that are better because there's always going to be somebody that's right. better than you. And you're always going to be miserable if you're doing that. Yeah. You know, if you're comparing to the guy that had the bigger Christmas tree this year or got the new car, or went on the vacation, or whatever, mm -hmm. you're going to be struggling yeah. if you're constantly doing that. The idea is to realize our own place, mm -hmm. our own story, our own path. Yep. And that it is an integral part of the greater whole, but it's not going to be exactly like, you know, Joe yeah. Smith over there. 
and I, I understand Amanda has said it before about, you know, that she's never had a new car and that they, you know, they don't live in a beautiful house like a lot of people mm. that she knows. And that doesn't mean that when you have those types of experiences that you will never have those things. You might be like, well, I never have. But that doesn't mean you can't. Mm -hmm. It's that mindset that keeps you trapped. It's the perception that keeps right. you trapped there. It's like like with the heater going out. This is just a, a small example, but like. Let's say I could look at this a couple of ways. I could look at it as like, oh, man, these people have heat and we don't. Right. You know, they're so lucky. We're right. not. Yeah. No, I don't look at it that way. No. <laughs> you know, it's, it's yeah. Maybe no. I did once upon a time. But with the ego death, you just, you know, that kind of goes away. Yeah, I think the holidays in particular might be a tough time for a lot of people and their egos. Yes. Um, I, you know, I have to share something. I've seen a couple things on Facebook lately that I was just like, wow, this yeah. is uh, kind of goes along with what we're talking about. Um, and I'm not going to say anybody's names or anything, but somebody. It was strange. They shared that basically, you know, who your real friends are based on who um, likes your posts or interacts with your posts. Mm hmm. Well, first of all, that's wrong, in my opinion. It's absolutely wrong. Um, because there, we all know Facebook works solely on algorithms. Yes. Which means I have 400 and whatever, I don't even know how many people, 500 something friends on Facebook, and I see about 25 regular people on my feed in their posts. Right. Now, I realize all 500 of my friends aren't on there as much as these 25 people are. Yeah. But they're on there. Yes. So we can't get into, well, why is that guy's post getting interactions and likes and mine aren't? Right. Well, that depends on algorithms, your interaction yourself with other people's posts. Yes. Um, and... The the thing that you brought up, too, which is a really good point, is what if, you know, there was this particular friend you had that just didn't happen to see that post? Yeah. And then came across it and felt like, wow, I thought I was part of your, you know, yeah. your your group. Right. Um, it's kind of doing something double edged here, and that is. Covering, which we do this a lot, is covering our insecurities with our ego. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it it just kind of screamed both to me. Right. It was like, wow, that's kind of a bummer. Yeah. Um, because I feel like the one of the first steps we could do uh, in the shedding of the ego process is starting with the young people and understanding more about the karma and what we're doing to society by allowing young people to be raised with this kind of mentality uh -huh. without supporting them and being there for them when they are that really, you know, absorb absorbable sponge that's soaking everything in. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking as a man here for a second that the ego can get way blown out of proportion, especially with males. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying that women can't be egotistical either, but especially male, you know, with the physique and this idea that we are the superior right. race or gender on the planet. Right. Um, and then teaching kind of our children of this eye for an eye. Yes. Tooth for a tooth mentality. And go out there and get what's yours and make it about you instead of more of the teaching them about the compassion, right. being part of a greater whole mm -hmm. that will make the world a better place. Yeah. It's going to take a lot of people to make that happen. It's not just one person stands up and says, yeah, it's all better now. Yes. One of my favorite things about this ego shedding process is looking at things now from the outside that I see things so differently that I look at things like this, like social media 
is toxic. Mm -hmm. It really is toxic. If you think that your friends should be based off of who likes your stuff, you don't know your friends. Right. Because most of the people right. that like my stuff are people maybe I've never met in person. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not putting anybody down. I love each one of you that likes my stuff. I really right. appreciate it. But if I went by that, I wouldn't, my best friend, I wouldn't think right. would be my best friend because mm -hmm. she doesn't like a lot of my stuff. Right. And that's not personal. Yeah. It, again, algorithms, when you're on Facebook, not <clears throat> everybody or whatever you like to use for social media. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a different routine. Some people are not on it for weeks at a time. And then we take it personally that they didn't wish us a happy birthday when they didn't know it was our birthday because right. they weren't on. Yeah. It's just really, really unhealthy. And mm -hmm. so I think before we take anything personally that's done on Facebook like that, we should stop and remember that this is not real life. No. This is social media. And is there people that read it or just scroll by it? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But then ask yourself, what does that matter? Right. Right. What does that, in the grand scheme of things, what does that matter? It doesn't. Nothing. It doesn't at all. I think where it maybe does matter is how we let it affect us. Our ego. Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly right. That's the only thing that's affected by it. You know, we have a lot of family and friends that doesn't listen to this show. Mm -hmm. Like I was just talking about Justin, because I know he's not going to hear this. Right. You know, does that hurt my feelings? Not for one second. Mm. It does not hurt my ego. It doesn't anything. We all have different interests. And I know that most of this stuff would go over his head and he wouldn't enjoy it. Right. And so I wouldn't expect him to listen. And I know that it only reaches, you know, a certain amount of people, a certain type of people. It's a it's a niche type of podcast. So I don't take offense to the fact that my closest friends don't listen to it. It's OK. But yeah, a lot of people would. A lot of people would. And right. and that's where we have to say it's OK. You yeah. know, I don't want somebody to feel bad that they, you know, don't listen to right. the podcast. No, I like to share the invite on my page and it's like whoever joins, cool. Yeah. Whatever. I don't, I just move on. And, and that's why I put stuff up too for the podcast, for the radio show is for the people that want to, because it's not going to reach everybody, but mm -hmm. some people want to listen to it. Some people sure. want to be involved in the ones that don't, they can just keep scrolling. Right. If we just scrolled by things that we weren't interested in, it might help some of the situation too. Yeah. Instead of arguing, but that's a whole other topic. Right. <laughs> so anyways, so let's get back to this process, this process of, of stripping the ego, because it actually is a very personal experience. Everyone has a different sense of self. Mm -hmm. So our journeys are very, very different. But usually the process starts with a spiritual awakening. And I don't like to say when the spiritual awakening is done, then you move on to the next stage, because I really feel like it's we're always awakening. We're re trying to reach enlightenment really is the goal, right? But that's hard goal to reach full enlightenment. So I think as long as we're going through that, we're still going through a spiritual awakening. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after the spiritual awakening, it's the dark night of the soul that usually hits us. And this is when we've gone through like the spiritual awakening part is where we're starting to see things aren't exactly what I thought they were. Mm. But the dark night is the, of the soul is where you realize you need to make some changes in your life mm. and with yourself. And right. that's hard. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like you've, there was the spiritual awakening and then there's the realization. Yes. Of, of like, OK, things aren't exactly what I thought. And the realization that not only do I not need to respond anymore like maybe I used to to a lot of things but it serves no purpose mm -hmm. yep it really didn't yep so I have to realize that those things come from within me my own damage my own insecurity yes or whatever you know a tip that I will give for how I've I've dealt with these kinds of things what you're talking about um I'll give you an example so I have the free reading group and I did a reading in the group for this lady and I told her that her missing cat had passed away. And this was a couple of months ago. And then all of a sudden, one of the listeners who I'm sure is listening now, uh, 
messaged me and said she sent a screenshot this woman was basically talking bad about me that I'm a fake or whatever because her cat has been spotted in the neighborhood and so she believes the cat's alive so so I'm a fake right okay <laughs> so a couple things here could not it might not be her cat but also I have never ever ever said that I'm right 100% of the time right if anything I will say that that's one of the harder things to do is to determine whether a cat or an animal of any kind is yeah. living or past because you're just that. going off the energy. But when this first started, if I, what I would have done is I would have probably ripped that woman apart. Who do you think you are? Yeah. Okay. But I didn't do that. I did message her and I, I said, do you want to talk about this? I said, because I, I'm willing to, right. to discuss this. And I was very nice and she read it and didn't say anything. And so I said, okay, well, if you don't want to discuss this, then I would just like you to know that it's okay. I I, I might be wrong and that's okay. Like I was upfront about saying right. it's a possibility yeah. and I've never said that I'm right a hundred percent of the time. So I'm really sorry if I was wrong. Um, and I hope that you get your cat back. I wouldn't have done that five years ago. Oh, well. I would have been so mad. That's what I was kind of referring to about the, I don't need to respond to things like the, maybe the way I used to. Exactly. It's even affected like the way I drive. Oh, that's big time. <laughs> it's like way less offensively, offensively and offensively. Yes. You know what I mean? No gestures, yes. screaming and yelling and flipping people off. It's just like, I, what? For what? Yes. My blood pressure to go up? I don't need to do that. Well, and I, I look at it too, like it comes back to the entitlement yeah. of like, if you're driving like a maniac and, uh, and all that, then you're kind of entitled. You think you're entitled. And I, I can't tell you how many speeding tickets I've had in my life, but none in the last five years, none yeah. since the spiritual awakening. Actually, was it last night or the night before you said to me, do you think maybe you drive a little too cautiously? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Anybody that drove with me, maybe five years or, or more, like 10 years ago, is going, what? She drives too cautiously? Because I let people cross the street. I let them cross if they need to cross. I, I let them go. <laughs> and I let people get in front of me if they need to get in front of me. Why? To show the universe, I realize I'm not in a hurry. And I realize that they're going to line the day up the way that I need it to. But also to show other people, it doesn't have to be that way. You no. don't have to cut people off. You can let people walk across the street. It's just a realization of, I'm not the only person on this planet. Exactly. It, and it may be hard to look at, but it's the truth. Yeah. It's the truth. Everybody has their own life, and we have to respect that. Yep. Yep. The next thing that usually comes in this process is starting to explore the things that we used to find silly or impossible. So this might might mean um, opening up these types of abilities yeah. or starting to learn about energy healing or astrology or other things that align the mind, body and soul. These are manifesting, all... manifesting meditation. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. No, it's a big one. I it When is. you start to realize that, wow, I've spent a lot of time sitting in my own crap. Yeah. For way much longer than I needed to sit in my own crap for. Me too. And I was starting to realize through this process of it really is all about what you do with it. Mm -hmm. And that you can literally imagine yourself in a new place um, five years from now and be there. Yeah, absolutely. You, you can. can. You can. But it doesn't mean you're not going to have to work for it. You will. Oh, you but, have to work, yeah. But you have to have, you have to set that intention, that goal, something for them, the ones that are on the other side helping you. You have to give them something like a some sort of blueprint to go off of. Otherwise, they're going to be like, well, we don't know what you want. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? Yep. I will say that this... Um, road to enlightenment so to speak you get glimpses of that full enlightenment what it must feel like to be at complete peace and i want that feeling so bad and so like when i have those glimpses i'm like come here enlightenment and then i do something that's not so enlightening because i'm human yeah. and i'm imperfect but it's those glimpses that keep me going that make me go i i'm a much more peaceful happy person than I was five years ago. Oh yeah. 
And I, I want to keep building that. I want to be more and more happy and, yeah. and open this more and more. And in order to do that, I have to shed the ego and continue to shed the ego. We yeah. all do. The next step is surrendering. <laughs> and that is a huge step because that's basically turning things over to the universe and saying, I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to allow you to guide me and show me where I'm supposed to go. It not only means that, but it's surrendering who you think you are and all of your thoughts and beliefs that you brought with it. Well, maybe not all of them, but right. a lot of them, a lot of those damaged thoughts, the ones that make you feel inferior or make your ego get hurt when it doesn't need to. We have to surrender all of that mm -hmm. and take each each incident each day yeah at a time yep. because that's another thing that we do is it's like, Oh, I messed up. So I'm not yes. good at this. I'm going to not try to go. Something even popped into my head about the lady that you did the reading for with the son that was trying to go into the military. Uh -huh. Um, this is nothing against people that are, are in the military or have ever been in the military. Um, I think everybody believes, um, or is grateful for anybody that's willing to put themselves yes. on the line for democracy and freedom. And, for sure. Um, at least I believe that I support people that fight for those reasons. Yes. <clears throat> However, I think when we go to the other side, we realize what nonsense war is really about. Mm -hmm. And that, if anything, is ego on like steroids oh, yeah. times a million yeah so by this grandfather putting roadblocks in front of this gentleman's life in order for him not to it's not because i think that the grandfather doesn't appreciate that life he lived and serving in the military but he has a different idea That's now right. about what is that? Why are we fighting? Yeah. Why do we have to shoot at each other and, you know, destroy one another? Yep. I think that is the ultimate enlightenment. Yes. Where he's saying, and it could be for a lot of other reasons. Sorry that I'm going back to this. It just oh, popped so, in no, my head. No, it's a good example. But for other reasons, because yes, the military is going to train your mind mm -hmm. differently than from the way you are the day you walk into boot camp. Yeah. You will not be the same person. Not to say you're dishonorable or a bad person, but they are going to train you to think a different way. Yes. And maybe that's not for everybody. Right. Yeah. And, you know, a part of the ego that gets in the way there is what I'm not good enough, what I can do this. I need to keep pushing. Right. I need to keep pushing. You're forcing it. Right. You're forcing it. Exactly. But it's really a lot of times the universe protecting you from something that you don't realize that it's protecting you from. This is a key point in a lot of things. A lot of things. Marina played this song in the car. I don't know who it was by and I don't know what the song was. You heard it, too. Mm -hmm. And it says something in there about, I prayed to God for this and God didn't answer my question. God didn't answer my prayers. Right. Basically like a relationship. I wanted to be with this person so bad mm -hmm. and I begged God to be with this person and I'm not with them anymore. And so God didn't listen. No, no, that's not. But there's so many people that thinks that that's right. what's going on. God's not listening. God's not listening. No. The universe, God, spirit, whatever right. you want to call it, is lining you up for something better. Mm -hmm. That thing was not meant for you. College right. was not meant for Jacob. This relationship Marina just getting out of was not meant for her. So the universe is pushing her out of it. It's uh, it's the way it goes. And I think the more that we can realize that, it, it's healthier for us. It helps us to, to go through this process, shed the ego, and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. It is very important. Yeah. Yeah. Really, I think it's important to to remember that the ego never totally dies. It's always a part of us. We we need some ego because it actually is our ego that protects us. I have a funny story. Yeah, I have a funny story because this is ego, even though if you, you might not realize it. 
I went to the grocery store the other day and I like to do the, the orders where they bring the groceries to you. You know, you order it online, they bring it to you. Okay. Right. So I'm sitting in the car waiting for them to bring me my order and the people next to me are getting ready to leave in their car and the guy takes his cart up to the front of the store and as he's coming back, for whatever reason, thinks that my car is his car because it's parked next to it. So he just <laughs> yeah. mistook it being his car. He opened the passenger door <laughs> and I yelled, oh shit, and grabbed my purse off the seat. And I I felt really bad after that because it was obviously an accident. But that is protection. Hmm? We're, but that's ego. We're protecting ourselves. Right. You have to protect yourself. Yeah. You don't know that guy was just accidentally opened the wrong door, right. but he could have been there to kill me. Yes. I didn't know, you know, but the ego jumps in and says, no, this is mine and I'm going to protect it. I think the one other time I could see it being beneficial for me in my life, uh, probably the only time it's really instrumental is when I'm really down in the dumps and I feel like it's not worth it. I don't want to, you know, I want to give up on this or I don't want, it's telling yourself, no, take a look at who you are, what you've done, what you've accomplished, what your goals are, your dreams, lifting myself out of that hole with my ego mm-hmm. that's the only time it's really beneficial for me mm-hmm. any other time it's exercised it's you know it's it's not f- for the better yeah i think when you go through this spiritual awakening and through this whole process you want to be a better person and you look at these things differently and for me i examine everything that i do not on a, an OCD type thing, but, you know, if I've done something wrong, mm-hmm. I look at it. Right. I pick it apart. What could I have done differently? And I actually just saw this quote. I don't know who this is from. It was just on, on Facebook. And it says, now that I know better, I must do better. Yeah. And that's true. I know that that's I exactly shouldn't it. act certain ways and mm-hmm. I'm not going to anymore, but I'm not perfect. And so I'm working. Exactly it. Like the awakening has made you realize I don't, I don't need to act like this. Yep, exactly. And I want to be helpful to others to see that they don't have to act like this either. Yeah. That the more that you just let your ego go and just understand that we all have our own backgrounds and damage and and whatnot that we you yeah. know yep are all human. Exactly. So, so there you have it. Yay! Yay! So let go of the ego. <laughs> yeah. It's not easy, but no, it, not. it all takes time. And, and I mean, seriously, I still have a lot to learn. I still mm-hmm. have a long way to go. But, um, you know, I'm yeah. proud of both of us because we have made some serious changes in that area since the going through the awakening. And mm-hmm. I know a lot of our listeners have too. So bravo yay. to you all. Yes. Very good. Yay. Well, before we say goodbye to everybody, would you like to share your information one more time? Yes, so you can find me at samanthajonespsychicmedium.com. You can schedule a reading there, find the radio show, which airs on Wednesdays, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, on voiceamerica.com on the Empowerment Channel. Yep. This week, I'm not going to have a guest. This week, is, like I said, it's going to be about uh, um, things that we deal with when people close to us pass away. I'm going to take callers and, and all that. So I, and I we'll like, give you that number one uh, more time really quick, 888-346-9141. One. Fabulous. So yeah, that that's Wednesday, ten a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then for you, yes, one more time for my art, djonesartcollection dot com for the web at djonesartcollection for Instagram, <clears throat> Facebook, and TikTok. We are going to share, which I forgot to mention uh, earlier in the episode, one more song for you guys, which I shared a while ago, but figured why not just put them all in a row? Yeah, do um, it. this one's called Buttercup. Um, <clears throat> that's Tom Kelly on. Uh, Vocals and guitar, Brian Huffman on lead guitar, myself on rhythm guitar, Rich Buckland on bass and keyboards, which I forgot to mention he did do the keyboards on the last song we did that we shared last week, and Milo Tedesco on the drums and percussion. Yay! And again, the song's called Buttercup. So that'll come on at the end of the theme song for today's episode. Did you ever share the theme song to the radio show? Yeah. Okay. I couldn't remember, you know. That. And I still haven't forgotten about, I think it was somebody, whoever, Nisha, asked about Adam getting oh yeah feedback about the intro lyrics yeah. or whatever. That I, I'm still trying to work on that. So. Okay. Okay. Fabulous. Well, we hope everybody has a great week. That we do. And until next week, peace and, and love. love.
Team. 